Okay, this is something that uh, I bought at the first ham swap. I had to uh, dig my way to it. There's um, there was another radio that I bought from the same guy at the first ham swap, but I don't really have it in a area that I can get to. I mean, I do kind of, sort of, but I it's uh, my workbench radio. The dial cord uh, died, broke, slipped, did something, stopped working. So I temporarily jerry-rigged uh, a, a portable GE radio that I bought um, on the workbench, uh, set it up on top and then run a wire from it into the uh, the workbench amplifier stereo combo thingamajigger. And so I've been listening to the radio via that. It's working fine, no problem. I do need to get to that uh, workbench stereo one day. So, uh, another day. Trust me, I bought two radios that day. Uh, this one is a Zenith Royal 500. Long distance. I've been kind of wanting one of these. Um, and I'm glad I really didn't pay a lot of money for it. Uh, for the two radios, I think I paid, uh, I think I paid like $8.00. Made have paid five. I don't remember. Actually, I might have paid five. I honestly don't remember. Um, it, it's an okay radio. It's not bad for what it is. The uh, handful of times I've tested it, um, I didn't really get the long range aspect. I did get some DX on it, but it wasn't uh, what I was expecting. Now, I didn't have to do anything really to this radio. Um, the um, Underneath here in the battery bay, there is, um, you know, those uh, battery pulls. And those were actually uh, adhered to the uh, labeling underneath here. So I, I removed the cover and I very slowly uh, took my heat gun and put it on a low disbursement, low temperature, back far away, heated it up, and worked it. And I was finally able to break that free. It's very fragile. This radio, I think, is from like 1958-59. And, you know, it's not a bad radio. But it's definitely uh, not what I was thinking. Anyway, I was telling you, I uh, opened it up, and uh, I saw that somebody had... Uh, recapped it and tuned it up. Now, how good did they tune it up? I don't know. One day I will actually sit down and do just that. Some of the uh, things that I've read about this is there's no real protection um, uh, voltage spike going into the speaker and so the speakers on these can blow, uh, get fried. Luckily, uh, that's not the problem on this. Fact or fiction, I don't know. But this one works. It's got uh, gear tuning. I see my microphone is not picking it up. And that's full bore. That's wide open. Plausibly, my batteries are also weak. Let me move this closer to my microphone, which is way over there. Over there. I have a uh, external shotgun mic pointed at me. And it's about uh, two feet away, so... You know, maybe that microphone's not on. Oh, I'm a dork. What I was doing... What I was doing is... I have my video camera, and I got it plugged into a monitor up there. So I'm able to work on things, and just look up at my monitor 
and see if I'm in focus or in frame or all that other good stuff. On my camera, I've got VU meters that tell me about my microphone and, and everything about the camera that I need to know at a glance without diving into a bunch of menus. I see it on screen. So I'm sitting there. I, I, I generally, 90% of the time, I pull audio from a audio recorder, a digital audio recorder. And so I put the radio close to the shotgun microphone because uh, I got tired of wearing a lapel. And so I just put it on a shotgun, a vintage Sony shotgun at that. And um, um, I did not see my audio meter on camera move. It's like, well, is the microphone working? And so I'm sitting there scratching the mic, and I didn't see the audio meter moving. And then it dawned on me, dork, the two different things. So anyway, there is that. This radio has has seen better days you know it's definitely uh, nowhere near a showroom floor um, radio it's definitely been used and that's fine um, we'll use it so I do need to clean it up but I haven't really wanted to scrub too hard because I didn't want to finish removing the rest of the silk screening here the rest of the fake uh, genuine imitation gold and then on the back, I do have some silk screening right there that I did not want to completely disappear. And uh, that right there says it's a Zenith 8 transistor, unbreakable nylon. I'm sure I could break that. I'll drive my truck over it. Guaranteed. Okay, so... Let me move this out of the way. Next couple of items. I think I got a fantastic, a phenomenal deal on. Well, I know I got an awesome deal on. Oops. It's a heavy little thing and I didn't have it and I almost dropped it. Even if this does not work, what I paid for it, is awesome. <laughs> Kick up the uh, kickstand on this. Adjust the camera. And the light just a little bit. Okay, so what you are looking at, in case you haven't read it by now, is a ICOM IC211, and this is a 2 meter all mode base mobile transceiver, complete with dust. I have no idea if this works. We're gonna, well, we're gonna try to plug it in now and see if it works. I say try because I don't remember uh, the power cord. Back in the 90s, I used to have one of these and enjoyed the radio but my goodness this thing was so ever loving problematic I was sending it to the repair technician all the freaking time it drifted um, these things are light sensitive so when you opened it you had to be careful with your ambient lighting because it would it would throw it off and it was it was so problematic that after about five or six times in the shop um, and it was he was a, a technician that ICOM um, uh, uh, farmed all of their vintage gear out to so he was definitely a trustworthy technician cannot begin to tell you who what or anything I know he was in the state of Washington and that's all I could tell you maybe you know maybe you'll remind me I may have his business card still somewhere Anyway, um, this is a, a QRP rig. I think it only puts out about 11 watts. I do have a RF Concepts uh, 2 meter all mode with preamp amplifier in, uh, in storage. Uh, in fact, I also have another smaller um, RF Concepts uh, amp. 
Uh, anyway, uh, got sidetracked there. As I was saying earlier, I liked, uh, liked working QRP and also enjoyed working DX. Um, those homebrew antennas I was telling you about, I would work uh, a lot of DX off of locally up and down the... Uh, well, back then it was the great state of California. Now it absolutely sucks. So if you're thinking about moving here, don't. Unless you're one of them. Uh, let's see here. First time playing with this. Get about here, and there's feels like the grease might be a little dry. That's stiff, stiff. That works. Stiff works. Stiff, stiff. Stiff. And it all all works. I don't remember too much about the radio. I don't remember what's underneath the cover here. But we have a cover up there. I'm sure in time I will find that out. You can see here the handle. Still got the wrapper on. Mine did not have the wrapper. We have uh, SO239 fuse. Uh, memory on off, and I apologize. I'm trying to pull it up where I could look. We have the uh, AIO ACDC computer plug thing. Uh, accessory plug. DC out. We have three spares, we have scope, and external speaker. Well, that's kind of cool. Of course, back then, I never had none of that stuff. Now, let me grab. Back in the day, with it, I did have, I believe, I think, maybe, I don't remember, the uh, microphone that came with it, which is this right here. I think I may have had that. I don't know. But one thing I know for sure that I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the camera out so it's not so tight. Okay. And we got just a standard four pin. I do know that I made up my own microphone for this. Um, to make up your own mic, all you need to do is just grab a 600, 600 ohm uh, microphone and uh, wire it in and there you go. Not a lot. Uh, you can make up your own amplifier mic. and um, Back then, and I still have the homemade switch somewhere. I had a homemade switch I made with a... Uh, 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 momentary PTT and a toggle switch that would uh, throw a, a carrier for hands-free. Uh, perfect for DCs, right? Um, but I also had where I could uh, plug in multiple mics, and I do believe I had a hand mic. Uh, I think I had my uh, packet plugged into this at one time. And uh, I ran, uh, back in the day, I used to run Turner microphones. I had Turner Expander 500, and another Turner that I can't think of. But I like Turner. Turner was awesome. So with that, I got the microphone. As you see, that's a fat and heavy little thing. And I didn't realize this. I was walking off and the guy says, no, no, all this is uh, with this as well. Which was the microphone. Got a small BNC to BNC cable and I can't see who it's made by it's good quality and then I got a BNC to uh, PL259 connector on there add that to the collection score so got that but most importantly I got this 
I got a plug with the plug. It's connected to a, a cable. And at the end of that cable, we got that. And that is awesome. What is that, you say? <laughs> this is the remote control for that radio, which is awesome. have no idea if none of this works. We are going to grab a plug real quick and test it. This, while I'm grabbing a plug, how much do you think I paid for this little guy? Take a goose, take a gander. Those of you that are into radios, what would you expect to pay for such a thing. You can go check eBay right now if you'd like. I, I'm glad I got another one of these. It's, you know, it's one of those things that always wanted, even after I got rid of the dumb thing. You know, I, I liked the radio, but I didn't like the fact that it it absolutely sucked. Put the kickstand up. Now I guess I should have plugged this in. It'll buy time for the guys that are running and checking eBay to see what this is worth. I had to see where the, the notches were. To plug that in correctly. And when you do this, make sure you don't do what I just did. Claw it and mash your fingers into the display. Cool. Okay. So... No. Oh. Aerial. I need a aerial. You would think by now I would have went and got my dummy load, but let's just see if we can make noise. I'm looking at the time, it looks like there very well may be a fourth video in the series. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. Maybe I'll save some for another day. I know it's a lot. This is awesome. Awesome sauce. Okay, so let me get this remote in view because I would imagine this is going to illuminate, but I don't know hows or what. Let me turn that overhead light off so when it does illuminate, we could all see. Of course, you know, I got the two overhead lights above. So we'll plug this into power. And uh, here we go. The moment I know I've been waiting for. So we got meter, meter movement. Turn this on. Oh, cool. Cool. Little tiny uh, vacuum fluorescent, it looks like, maybe. Display. So we'll play with that in just a second. Don't do this at home. So it appears that it is transmitting. Uh, 
turn my light on so I could see. So RF power is pretty much down. Squelch. Not sure where my dummy loads are. You know what I can do? Yeah. I was going to plug it into my my service monitor. But let's play for a moment. Well, that is working. And I have direct light on it, so I, I'm not seeing any uh, any anomalies at this point. Of course, I would need to leave it on and let it set and see what happens. The display lights are dim. I don't remember, do I have a dimmer control? There we go. The answer to that is yes. Yes, I do. Isn't that nice? gain all the way up. Uh, I don't care about the AF gain, that's microphone. RIT. My RIT in the center. Of course I can't see my pointer, so I don't know where my RIT's at. And I'm in FM. So this is FM upper lower sideband with CW. That's that carrier I was getting on the other other ICOM. So off of off of that uh, telescopic antenna, just got a repeater. I cannot wait until I get a uh, ham station set up. I have no idea where I'm putting it. I'm going to have to come in here and really look at my office and uh, see what and where. I have absolutely no room in this office. Like I said, I've buried myself that I can't even access my, uh, my closet. Um, Oh yeah, hopefully the grease will break free on that, or uh, or it'd be easy to uh, re-lubricate. So very cool. All right, so let me bump the camera out and let's play with this uh, remote real quick. So we got that turned on, and I'm gonna hit the up. Nothing down, nothing. It's 
very well that oh, I lost power. Well, that was short lived. I don't know where my power went. However, dialogue was on with that. Well, it is very obvious that I have no idea what I'm doing. But we can see by me pushing buttons, it does correspond. So if I go um, tone, that yeah, tone switch sticks. So I wonder if this doesn't have a built in uh, PL tone, which I starting to think that he said it did. So let me go reset function simplex. Yeah, I, I probably I don't know what I'm doing. Because I'm not getting any of these lights down here to illuminate when I push the buttons. But you can see otherwise it does. And it's locking the, uh, the dial on this. So I turn this off. And you see the dial lock. So more playing around will happen. And this is the IC-RM2 remote control. But the, the cool thing is, is I've got one. And that is awesome. Okay, enough with this. Let's move on to the next one. I see the... Uh, Length on this video is getting long, so I'll do uh, I'll do one more, and then I'll take it from there. Whether I'll end the video at that point or carry on with a fourth part, you know it it uh, <clears throat> it just dawned on me. I forgot to tell you how much I paid for that last icon we just looked at. Any guesses? Any ganders? Well, even the guy's asking price was a phenomenal job. A uh, job. <laughs> was a phenomenal price. I'm sorry, I had my mind... Uh, anyway. Uh, it's a phenomenal price. It's not what I paid. He, uh, he wanted $50. That's right. Five zero dollars That is a bargain. Even if the dumb thing did not work, that is a bargain. So I asked him. I said, you take 40 for it? And he pauses for a second. He says, yeah, I'll take 40. I said, okay. <laughs> Couldn't uh, get those two Jacksons out of my wallet fast enough. And then so I started to grab it, and he says, oh, wait, wait, this other stuff goes along with this. Like, oh, wow, cool, okay, score for me. And then so just uh, just right uh, five, six feet away or so, I spied something else that he had. Um, and it's like, hey, wait a minute, that looks familiar. Uh I've been trolling for one. Let me just stop and look at it to confirm it is what it is I think it is. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I've bent over, walked over, oops, and I just smacked my uh, <clears throat> monitor. So I walked over and <clears throat> reached down and grabbed it and <laughs> sure enough, there it is. I said, holy guacamole, Batman. 
I looked up at him and I said, uh, how much? He says, you know what that is, don't you? I said, I'm pretty confident I know what that is. So I reached down and I grabbed it and picked it up and, uh, of course I had to put the icon down. Um, grabbed it and looked at it and it's like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, uh, it's dirty, needs a good cleaning. And I would really like to put this on my workbench. But I have no idea where I'm going to find the real estate. I have absolutely none. I've removed things from my workbench. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to be removing some more things from my workbench. Just to accommodate. This is, this is a, a device that I wouldn't mind having uh, completely uh, permanent on my workbench. Old school knows exactly what this is. He has one similar, I think. Uh, I can't remember if his is this exact model, but I do believe he has one. This is a BK Precision Wow and Flutter meter. And what this is used for is for um, testing and aligning your uh, cassette tapes, your reel-to-reel, -reel, and I would imagine you could even uh, your uh, record players. So um, this is going to be the first time I've plugged it in, turned it on, and uh, seen if it worked. This uh, device covers uh, Japan, um, North America, Europe, and I forget where the CCR is. But it basically covers the world um, by pushing these buttons. I have n absolutely no experience with this, uh, with one of these devices. These things are really spendy on eBay. And I didn't think I'd get one, you know. I, I like to troll, you know. I want to make sure I get things at my price. So I don't mind waiting and trolling. Uh, these things are, like I said, spendy on eBay. So, uh, I believe he said uh, he wanted $10 for it. I couldn't, yeah, $10. I couldn't get that money out of my pocket fast enough because I, 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 uh, <laughs> I remember thinking, oh, you know, I got a bargain for what he wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in.